Folks, I am one proud Bavarian and I'm excited to be able to bring you more info related to Victoria 3. There was an interview during PDXCon in which Sana Valapur, who is the community ambassador to Victoria 3, interviewed Max elmbeck Herholm, who is the art director of the game. This interview brought some interesting perspectives to the light of day that can help with understanding the overall vision of the game. In this video, I would like to compare what we know about the art direction of Victoria 3 to Victoria 2, while also highlighting various interesting tidbits about the map, tooltips and UI. As always, whether you agree or disagree with my opinion, make sure to make your case within the comments as meaningful community feedback is extraordinarily important to everyone involved. Now then, let's kick it off by talking about what Victoria 3's art desires to convey. On a primary level, the team wants to develop the living world that the game's intricate mechanics bring with them further. Instead of limiting the perception of the world to numbers, the key aim of the art direction is to depict the world in a more tangible and recognizable way. This can already be seen in the loading screens shared with us throughout the interview. The focus of many of them lies with the people, so the pops that inhabit the world. We can see people of many different walks of life in this image alone, and interestingly enough, not to get too artsy about it, the light shines bright only where the people that live in poverty are present, with the richer people being in the shade. There are many ways of interpreting this, but the overall focus of this image lies with a society that is so important in Victoria 3. Max, the art director, also brought this up within the interview itself, explaining that not key personnel, but the societies as a whole are the primary cogs in the machine. The interesting part about this to me is the stark contrast in this basic design choice compared to the art direction within Victoria 2. The loading screens of Victoria 2 in general depicted things of the time period, but never put them into the context of what the period and the game was actually about. It also, most of the time, depicted the Western elite during important events, rather than diving into the life of the societies they were leading at the time. While it certainly gave a feeling of regality to Victoria 2, and don't get me wrong here, Victoria 2 art is absolutely gorgeous, it didn't touch on some of the fundamental aspects of what makes this game series so absolutely great. The struggle of societies that meet, but also the struggle of the population within one society, is a primary focus here that is truly what the key element of the game is. In my opinion, while Vicky 2 has great art, Victoria 3's art direction captures both the game's focus as well as the actual time period better. Additionally, of course, Victoria 2's art was rather Eurocentric in its nature, although an absolutely pivotal part of this period was the rapid globalization brought upon the world by technological advances. Victoria 3's art direction does a much better job of showing that empires, cultures and societies clashed on a global scale, oftentimes interacting for the very first time in history. This image in particular captures the fact that the world of Victoria 3 is growing closer and closer more than ever before. Max actually focused on this topic in particular. A goal of the team was to achieve unique art both in loading screens and on map depiction in all corners of the world. Rather than focusing on just one region, they want the entire map to look unique, alive and flexible. Max mentioned that they want to show off the social hubs, so cities in particular, and have them depict what is going on in the province. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's compare some screenshots. This screenshot here depicts the Ottoman Empire's city of Merzin, Adana, Osmania, Konya and Kayseri. We can spot various activities that can be traced back to provincial buildings. For example, there is the fishing industry, the depiction of horse carriages, a fairly sizable port and then some individual buildings like a plantation, something that looks like a palace, a factory and something that seems to me like the centerpiece of the city. I am not sure whether it could be a government building or a garrison, however. There also seem to be smaller, individual buildings that could, for example, signify smaller villages. On top of that, there seems to be some sort of weather effect as well, although I'm not sure what it is. Regardless, the actual kicker with this image for me is the fact that the actual pop makeup of the city seems to be represented within these smaller square-shaped buildings as well. Let's compare two cities to get a better understanding of what I mean. Naples here has many individual building types within it, but most of the city is made up of houses with grey roofs that don't exactly seem prestigious. These individual square-shaped buildings, that is my thinking at least, could symbolize that Naples is primarily a city of laborers and possibly the petite bourgeoisie. I assume that the density here also shows off how many people properly live in these hubs. On the other hand, Paris has a city core that looks much richer with their brightly colored roofs and then surrounding the center, areas with quite a large amount of greenery. On the outskirts of Paris, you can then find many unique buildings, but also the suburbs that contain the same poorer looking grey roofed houses. Amiens, for example, lacks any buildings that make up the rich core of Paris, hinting at Amiens actually historical position of rising up to be a center of the French industrialization, but with that also not really a city with a large population of intellectuals and wealthy folks. All in all, this is the sort of city sprawl that I would desperately want for Crusader Kings 3. It goes further than any city sprawl we have seen in the past. Most grand strategy games that have city sprawl just plop down a random amount of houses depending on the location's population density. What we have in Victoria 3, however, is something that right properly depicts just how wealthy the location is, what unique buildings it has, what general cultural area it belongs to and what the people within the city might feel like. 
I seriously hope that this is the new standard for Paradox Games and City Sprawl as it goes above and beyond what we have had until now. The map also has depictions of the monuments that were so important for the time period such as Machu Picchu right here. Frankly, the map itself was something that on the screenshots shown on Victoria 3's Steam page left me hoping it would be improved significantly, but Machu Picchu and the surrounding mountains look right properly amazing. Paradox has chosen a less comic looking style for this map compared to for example CK3 that is quite eccentric and captures the massive scale of Victoria 3's map. Improvements can most certainly be made, but I found this to be quite beautiful. This screenshot of Egypt also shows some beautiful terrain and most importantly that, Max mentioned this explicitly during the interview, the fog of war is made up of clouds that follow the art style of clouds and paintings of this time period. I will mention that the British Isles in the early screenshots certainly looked underwhelming to me, but these other screenshots seem quite exciting. Another thing that I really want to highlight in the screenshot are the nodes that one can see on the sea. Could they be related to shipping and trade zones? What do you think? Now let's talk about the UI. According to the interview, the UI was designed as a compromise between legibility and showing some of the prestige that was so important in the era. Personally, I am not really sure right now how I should feel about it. I agree with the art director at least when he says that they wanted to stay away from a UI that only really fits one or two cultural areas and instead go with a more sober looking UI. The information within the UI also looks quite readable in everything we have seen so far, however there is some sort of flair that I am missing at the moment. An interesting tidbit here is that the analysis that I proposed when it comes to market access in my Vikonomics video appears to have been entirely correct. Mazovia here has zero infrastructure and would require 34 to get all the goods from and to the market, but instead it can get no goods whatsoever and therefore despite being within the Russian market has no market access at all. The art designers also focused on researching the outfit styles of various culture groups and I personally quite like the style of the proper characters that are making their first entrance in the Viki series with this game. It is also interesting to point out that this info screen reads primary cultures, so plural. How exactly culture integration would work is something that I am very excited about as it would allow for even more unique playstyles. Now last but very much not least, let's take a look at the map mode that nobody is likely to dislike, the paper map. The paper map stays true to Victoria 2 by basically looking like a map made in this era. It looks regal, it looks prestigious, but it also is very easy to read. The areas that are not filled with a color and only have a colorful outline are unplayable, unrecognized nations, so oftentimes highly decentralized regions with little or no central government. We can see that certain vassals are colored in the shade of their overlord, for example Korea, Tibet and the various Indian principalities. We can also see that Colombia is called New Granada, which was indeed its name until 1862. Do note that the borders of the world are not set in stone and that this map is basically already out of date. We can also make out shipping lanes, although I am not very certain what the different colors mean to suggest for them. Maybe those are the areas your trade fleet is actively and successfully protecting? I am not sure. Regardless, the paper map to me is inarguably beautiful. Now this was the overview of the art of Victoria 3. What do you think? Are there points on which you disagree with me? Do you think something is missing? Make sure to make your case here in the comments, I read them all. And now I would simply like to thank the members of the channel. Thank you very much, dear barons, counts and dukes. For now, later, alligator.